Here we'll do a quick review of proteins, what they're composed of, and where they're used in the body. We will also introduce you to a new type of polynucleotide called RNA. RNA plays an important role in protein synthesis. This video is somewhat simplified and suitable for an introduction in a general science course such as Science 10. Proteins are vitally important for the human body. They form our hair, skin, eyes, and many of our tissues including muscle and nerve tissue. They also constitute part of our bones. Our organs are also made of protein. In addition, hormones which carry chemical messages throughout our body are proteins, as are enzymes which enable most of the chemical reactions in our body. Antibodies which are part of our immune system are also proteins. Chromosomes consist of both DNA and proteins. Proteins also carry out transportation in our body. One example is hemoglobin which transports oxygen throughout the bloodstream. Proteins have very complex structures. This is a diagram of the structure of myoglobin, a protein which stores oxygen in muscle tissues. This diagram shows what is called the tertiary structure of myoglobin, a three-dimensional rendering of coiled and non-coiled sections of this giant molecule. On a much simpler level, we can also consider what is called the primary structure of a protein. Proteins consist of long chains of amino acids. The diagram shows the sequence of amino acids in one part of such a chain. The little circles in this diagram represent the building blocks of proteins, or amino acids. There are 20 different types of amino acids which can bind together to form protein chains. These are abbreviations of the names of four of the amino acids. Here's a generalized structure common to amino acids. They all contain an NH2, or amine group a carboxyl group called COOH, and an R group where R can stand for a combination of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and sometimes sulfur atoms. It is the R group which is different in each amino acid. Here is a diagram showing the structures of individual amino acids. Every single protein is a unique combination of the 20 different amino acids. In order to function properly, a protein must be assembled with exactly the right combination of amino acids. Proteins are assembled in ribosomes, small organelles found floating around in the cytoplasm of our cells. So how do the ribosomes know how to assemble these amazingly complex proteins? It is a truly fascinating story of how this happens. However, before we get into the story, we need to introduce you to another character in the plot, so to speak. It is called RNA, a ribonucleic acid. Like DNA, RNA is a polynucleotide, a very long molecule made of smaller units called nucleotides. This diagram shows only a very small portion of an RNA molecule. The green helix represents a sugar phosphate backbone. It is similar to the one in DNA, except the sugar in RNA is different. Let's take a closer look at a nucleotide of RNA. Like a DNA nucleotide, it has a phosphate group and a base. Four different bases are possible. The one shown here is guanine. The sugar in RNA is called ribose. In ribose, there is an OH group on the two prime carbon atom right here. You might recall that if this was a DNA molecule rather than an RNA one, the sugar would have an H instead of an OH on the two prime carbon atom. Because it has less oxygen atoms than ribose, it is called deoxyribose. So just remember the sugar in RNA is ribose with an OH on the 2' carbon. Like DNA, RNA has nitrogenous bases shown as these colored bars. Three of RNA's bases are the same as those found in DNA. These are cytosine, guanine, and adenine. Do you remember what the fourth base in DNA is? It is thymine, however RNA does not have thymine. Instead, it has a base called uracil, abbreviated as a U. This diagram shows the structure of uracil. In uracil, nothing is shown on this carbon atom. When nothing is shown on a carbon atom in this type of model, it means there's a hydrogen atom attached here. 
Now we'll look at the structure of thymine, the base found in DNA. When a solid line is drawn in this type of model, it represents a carbon atom with three hydrogen atoms attached, like this. The main thing you need to remember is that uracil is present in RNA and thymine is present in DNA. Also remember their structures are slightly different, but you probably don't need to remember their actual structures at this stage. The thing about bases we do need to know well are the base pairing rules. We'll start by reviewing the pairing rules in DNA. Remember cytosine always pairs up with guanine and guanine with cytosine and adenine always pairs up with thymine. Now we'll look at the base pairing rules for RNA. Unlike DNA, RNA does not have a double helix. It is only a single strand. Therefore, bases in RNA do not pair with each other. However, bases in RNA do pair with bases on a nearby DNA molecule, as we'll see. RNA has both cytosine and guanine, so a cytosine on DNA will pair with a guanine on RNA. Also, a guanine on RNA will pair with a cytosine on DNA. An adenine on DNA cannot pair with a thymine on RNA because RNA has no thymine. Instead of thymine, RNA contains the base uracil. So an adenine on DNA will always pair with a uracil on RNA. Similarly, a uracil on RNA will pair with an adenine on DNA. So if RNA has an adenine, what will it pair up with in DNA? Remember DNA has thymine rather than uracil. So an adenine on RNA will pair up with a thymine on DNA. Let's summarize the main differences between RNA and DNA. First we see that RNA has only a single strand, whereas DNA has a double strand. Now DNA contains the bases, C, G, and A. And RNA also contains the bases C, G, and A. What makes them different is DNA has the base thymine, while RNA has the base uracil instead of thymine. Another difference is that DNA can replicate or make copies of itself, whereas RNA cannot replicate. Another difference is DNA always remains in the nucleus. DNA is used over and over again, and it's vital to keep it undamaged. Remaining in the nucleus at all times helps protect it. RNA is manufactured in the nucleus using a process called transcription. But after it is made and processed, it moves through pores in the nuclear membrane and into the cytoplasm. The type of RNA we've shown here is called mRNA. Once it's in the cytoplasm, it assists ribosomes in the process of making proteins. There are three main types of RNA that are used in protein synthesis. Let's have a quick look at each one. The first type is called messenger RNA, or mRNA. Messenger RNA carries the code from DNA in the nucleus to ribosomes in the cytoplasm. The code on mRNA is read by the ribosome and used as instructions to manufacture a specific protein. The second type of RNA is called ribosomal RNA, or rRNA. Ribosomes, the organelles in the cytoplasm where proteins are made, are themselves composed of ribosomal RNA and other proteins. The third type of RNA is called transfer RNA, or tRNA. It is shaped like this. And its function is to carry or transfer amino acid molecules which are present in the cytoplasm to ribosomes. In the ribosomes, the amino acids are arranged and bonded together to form specific protein molecules. In the video Protein Synthesis Part 2, Transcription, we will explain how messenger RNA is made in the nucleus using the code carried in DNA. This is somewhat simplified and suitable as an introduction to the process for use in a more general science course such as Science 10. A more detailed description will be presented in a more advanced biology course like Biology 12.